When the Aurelia Packet and Times shut its doors after 147 years, the Globe and Mail's Marcus G. set out to investigate what the closure meant to the small Ontario city. Instead of interviews, however, he decided on a different course. Acting as if he were a local reporter, G. took in events that would have been covered by the now-shuttered newspaper, from an announcement about a new waterfront development to the handing out of certificates to high school athletes. His eye for what residents would no longer read about in the Packet and Times resulted in a moving, beautifully written feature on one of the compelling issues of our time, the loss of local journalism in communities like Aurelia. A year after the Quebec City mosque shootings, many Canadians might have moved on, assuming everything that could be done for the victims had been done. With spare and unflinching language, Ingrid Peretz of the Globe and Mail shattered that complacency in her riveting story of one survivor's devastating experience that night at the hands of a mass murderer and through the year that followed. Having worked hard to gain the trust of Eamon Durbali and his family, Peretz avoided the maudlin and overwrought in her telling of this dramatic tale. Choosing details and words with care, she crafted a story that unspooled with deceptive simplicity and a powerful conclusion. Philippe Teixeira Lessard, de La Presse, a décrit la fin d'une époque pour une petite ferme familiale québécoise. Le reporter a illustré la vie de Normand Larose et Pauline Cloutier alors qu'ils terminaient à regret leur dernière traite, leur dernier encan et leur dernier jour comme producteurs laitiers. L'écriture est élégante et émotive. On peut sentir l'angoisse du couple qui abandonne tristement l'œuvre d'une vie alors qu'il n'y a pas d'acheteur ni d'enfant pour prendre la relève. Philippe Teixeira Lessard a rédigé un reportage touchant sur le dernier chapitre de la ferme La Rose Cloutier et dans un sens plus large à propos d'un mode de vie rural qui s'éteint peu à peu. The award goes to Marcus G. Uh, I have to begin just to tell you what a little bit of a mishap I had on the way here, so you have to forgive me if I read rather poorly because I was having a drink before this uh, and went in for a hug with Robin Doolittle and she broke my glasses. <laughs> so they're, they're broken. And uh, so my first thanks go to my wife, Kate, who brought some crazy glue in her purse to this event. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work, but... <laughs> Uh, thank you very much to this, but uh, I know it's a cliche to say it, but I really owe it all to my editors in this case. Uh, it was David Walmsley's idea after the shuttering of these newspapers to go to Aurelia and look at the packet of times, a uh, packet in times. And the, the packet, of course, was one of many small town papers that were killed off with a snap of the fingers, snap of the fingers last year. It was in publication for 147 years. And then one day, a suit came into the newsroom and said, it's over, guys. They didn't even get a chance to put out a farewell issue. Uh, I could have written a, a story about how sad it was to see small towns lose their papers. But my editor, Nicole McIntyre, had another idea. Go to Aurelia for a week and write about the, what the packet would have been covering if it still existed. Act like a local reporter report what they would have reported. It was a classic illustration of the old saw, don't tell me, show me. And it brought home what this loss really meant to Aurelia. So thanks, Nicole. You're a model editor. You're a model editor demanding in the very best way. Thanks also to the packet reporters who went out of their way to help me uh, find the stories that they might have covered uh, if they hadn't just been thrown out of work. I'd like to dedicate this award to them and to all the small town reporters and editors across the country who labor to tell people what's happening in their communities. Thank you. Thank you.